So I've definitely kept up with my journaling and it's been really good for me and a couple of things that I've noticed. I don't like the things in the boxes right now, the things that the grown-up in me knows that they need to do. Like my list for today, of course it starts out with taking the Christmas decorations down. You can see that the table still has a Christmas decoration on it, but so does the entire house. And then there's cleaning the bathroom, and there is preparing the deposits for the HOA checks. And there's some vacuuming that needs to be done, and there's meal planning that needs to be done, and there's grocery shopping that needs to be done, and it seems like everything on my list is a box today. Oh, I've got a couple of fun things on it. I've got a follow-up video that I want to do on the Wheel of the Year, and I want to finish off the Magician series with the Magician Here and Now. But I'm finding that the kid in me is really resisting the things inside the boxes, even though intellectually. As I started my journal, I went back and read it again about making those be colorful in some sense. But the other thing I've realized is there's a lot of boxes because I postpone the things I don't like to do. And then I end up with a whole crap ton of them that has to be done at once. And I'm sure I'm not unusual in that. So there's a lesson for me in spreading those things out and not having to spend days in a row catching up on the responsibilities of life. There's also, I have to admit on the other side of that, a lot of satisfaction with checking those boxes off when they're done. So at the end of the day, if I did something fun like a video or spent some time cross-stitching or something that's just pure enjoyment for me, there's no sense of crossing that off because there was a celebration in the process of doing it. But the tasks of life, the checkoff at the end of the day, becomes the celebration. So I tried to approach this from the be in every moment and find the sacred in every moment. And the truth is that, according to my frame of mind, the things in the boxes are just things I need to do. And there's no way in my current frame of mind I will convince myself that cleaning the bathroom is a celebration or is colorful in any way. But, at the end of the day, if I check that off my list, it turns into a rainbow. So several months ago I started getting together with a sister down here to celebrate Espits and Sabbats. And it's been lovely. I'm really enjoying it. And we hope in time that our energy will bring others to us. But we're also rather content in the time being to spend time, just the two of us. It's like exploring how your energies weave together and being very aware of what you create. And I think that's a good place to start before we have others join us. Well, I was snowed in on Saturday, so didn't have full moon with her. I did my own thing, of course, because regardless of when I gather with anyone else, I do my solo rites. So we didn't get together until last night. And we were doing an exercise as part of our reflections on the full moon. And it was centered on the theme of I am. I gave each of us a piece of paper. It was a half of an eight and a half by eleven piece of paper. And colored pens, because I'm so into the colored pens nowadays, and I had us both fill the piece of paper with all the things we could declare that right now, in this moment, we are. And I told her when I gave her the exercise, don't make a list, because we don't prioritize ourselves. Um, make different colors and different sized writings and different angles and we're not stopping until we have this page completely filled in. So we did the exercise and she's a couple of years older than I am. So both of us are dealing with some of the changes that happen when you get older. Both here and in the body. And I was just terribly impressed with the word that was on her page. Because we're older women and spiritually mature, we've been on our paths for a long time, 
as you might expect, our page was nicely filled with the affirmations that were very positive. That had to do with strength and our ability to love and be loved and uh, the powerful, assertive, affirmative ways in which we could describe ourselves. Uh, but there were also things on the page that had to do with um, some of the experiences of who we are that have to do with feeling like parts of us are crumbling away or changing, the pain that joints cause, um, uh, shifts in our hormones and, and just uh, the things that, that come along with aging. So I had that on my list as she did on hers. And not out of balance, they were more or less realistically reported, <laughs> I'd like to say it's that way. And I was terribly impressed by the fact that on her page, which had a lot of the same kinds of descriptors that I captured that I was in the moment, in very large letters, she wrote ageless. Ageless. It really gave me something to think about. I'm going to spend some time journaling about that later on today. What part of us has always been the same? What declarations could we make of I am that we've been making the lengths of our lives? And that would embrace insecurities and challenges as well as the more life-affirming aspects of who we are. Ageless. What endures? Two women who come together to celebrate the goddess gave us the opportunity to explore the aspects of goddess which are eternal and the aspects within us that are eternal regardless of our age. Ageless. Especially to an aging woman. Very inspiring. Cause for consideration for myself. This particular exercise is one one of my former mentors would have us do about this time every year somewhere between solstice and, and in bulk. And we'd fill that page up. I remember the first time we did it, we'd fill the page up and then she wouldn't let us stop until that page was truly, it seemed, completely filled up. We would share what we wrote and we'd talk about it and then she challenged us then. First reminding us that anything we captured, the moment we captured it, we moved on to the next moment and the next moment in our life. So we weren't that same person from that moment going forward. And the other thing she said is no matter how much you think your life is filled with all those words on that piece of paper and got to the point you didn't think you could cram anything else in, there was still a lot of white space on that paper. There was still a lot of possibility in the spaces between all of the words that we use in any moment to declare who we are. Yeah, and you saw his ears, so let's bring the old boy up so you get to see Ernie. Those of you who are Ernie fans, he's a little bit dozy right now. He's kind of a lump of French Bulldog. <laughs> I am the queen of the poop patrol. Actually, I am the poop patrol. Where we live now, because we're in a mobile home community, we have a tiny little bit of plot that our house sits on. We aren't allowed to put fences up. We don't have grass, we sit on stones. And so, the little guys do their business off of our back porch. Somewhere along the way, it became my job to do the poop patrol. I do miss from the old house, and it's one of the only things I miss about being in the big house. Being able to open the door and let the puppies run. Oh, it's not that I didn't do poop patrol there, but I kind of did it when I wanted to. Not every time the boys do their business. I'm going to search and see. Seems to me I have a video somewhere that shows the guys all running out <laughs> the back door at the old house. I think I'll go see if I can find that. If I find it quickly enough, I'll add it here.
I hope it'll bring a tear to my eye because our old Georgie will be running out the door with the two little ones. And we're still missing our Georgie. We have nothing to fear. There's a pin in the window. No one will cause problems at our house. Right, Bogey? It's lunchtime. Now there's something you don't know about me. I love People Magazine. If I'm being even more honest, I even like those gossip papers. I worked in a delicatessen for years, making cheesesteaks and submarine sandwiches. And when the store was quiet, I read every magazine in the rack. And that included those gossip magazines. And I kind of got addicted to them. But I won't pay to buy them. But if one's sitting around in a doctor's office, you can believe I'm reading it. Because you never know who's having an alien baby. You just never know. Before. And. After. At least out here on the porch. We still have to uh, finish up inside, but things are looking a lot less like the holidays. I'm keeping you up though, until it feels like it's not winter anymore. So, I can't sit straight at the moment because I'm pooped. <laughs> but let it be known, Christmas season has ended in our household. Which means I finally got the decorations put away. Oh, four hours to do that, interrupted by a delightful conversation with a loved one who as he watches this is going to be very proud of me for having gotten them done and down and I got both the bathrooms cleaned so today was a day of working within the box <laughs> and like I mentioned earlier I don't get the joy necessarily in the process of doing things like that especially on a day like today when it kind of hurt a lot to do any physical activity but now looking around the house being back to its november -y kind of look I'm fine with it now <laughs> so it was a good day <laughs> my tripod has a third extension on the legs so I could do I have to take my glasses off because the light across from me is kind of lighting up my glasses Oh, you're seeing me at my worst. <laughs> Headed for the shower at the end of the day. I was telling my friend when I was talking to him earlier today that one of the challenges about doing these things is I want to fix my hair. I want to tidy up to make sure that you don't see anything not perfect in the background. And it's hard for me to get over that. But I have determined that I will do so. So anyway, I have one thing left that has to be done today. And that is because I need to go grocery shopping tomorrow. We're running out of a couple of things we need to have come tomorrow. And I realized I put a square box around planning meals for the next week and doing my grocery list. 
And I've been realizing as I've been thinking about, oh, I have to do that tonight. It's not a square box thing. I really enjoy doing that. That's good, isn't it? <laughs> I do that journal in erasable gel pens, and I will erase the box that I had put next to that. So after I did the D decorating today, I said to Roger, I am bound to determine that this year there will not be a Christmas decoration that I forget to put away. I lied. See that bright light over there? That's the light over the kitchen sink at our next door neighbors. Yeah, that's how close we are together here. All I can think of is it literally illuminates the inside of my kitchen. But when they stand under there, how do they deal with that glare? It feels so good to be sitting here in my chair. Do you have a chair? Do you have your place that you hang out the most? <laughs> this would be mine. And Roger's is to the left of me because what you see in front of you, he loves that more than me. His big screen TV. He's going to get the pizza. So the TV is, oh, thank you, goddess, off <laughs> for a couple of minutes. But not a Christmas decoration in sight. Well, except for... What you doing, Ernie? <laughs> and boogies on guard waiting for dad to come back <laughs> 